Hello, I'm Colleen Pearl the Cool Crone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about the astrological events that take place from the full moon in Aquarius on July 24th until the new moon in Leo on August 8th. Now let's look at the astrological events that occurred from the full moon in Aquarius on July 24th up to the new moon in Leo on August 8th. As I already said, we had the full moon in Aquarius. I did a video on the full moon in Aquarius and it's on my YouTube channel now, so check that out. We're also going to talk about Mercury, Trine, Neptune in the water signs. On July 25th, we had Mercury in Cancer opposing Pluto in Capricorn. We'll look at that transit as well. In addition, we'll look at Mercury in Leo in opposition to Saturn in Aquarius. We'll look at the Sun in Leo in opposition to Saturn in Aquarius. On August 3rd, we'll look at Venus in Virgo, trine Uranus in Taurus. And we'll look at Mercury in Leo, square Uranus in Taurus on the same day. We will also explore for August 6th, the Sun in Leo, square Uranus in Taurus. Now let's look at the planets that changed signs or changed directions in this time frame, July 24th to August 8th. First one is on the 27th, Mercury finished up its transit through Cancer and went into the sign of Leo. On the 29th, Mars left Leo and went into the sign of Virgo. And on the 31st, the asteroid Ceres entered the sign of Gemini. We also had Jupiter in Pisces retrograding back into the very late degrees of Aquarius on July 28th. On August 2nd, Juno retrograding in Sagittarius. In addition, we have four major planets that are retrograde in this period. Pluto, which went retrograde on April 27th and will be there until October 6th. Saturn, which was retrograding on May 23rd and will also be there until October. Jupiter from June 20th until October 18th. And Neptune, which went retrograde on June 25th and will remain there until December 1st. Now let's look at the major aspects for this time period. The first one up is Mercury trine Neptune. This is a transit that very often causes people to be extremely emotional. They may feel very, very vulnerable and sensitive. They also could act out impulsively. In other words, you just really don't have a handle on your emotions. Both planets are in water signs, making you feel extremely, extremely emotional. And in this case, Neptune is almost acting as a malefic in that it doesn't give a bright, shiny face to that energy of Mercury and Cancer. On the 25th, Mercury will be opposing Pluto. Mercury will be in Cancer, still that water sign, and Pluto is at the tail end of Capricorn. Mercury rules the way we communicate, in other words, our words. And Pluto is a very intense planet. It has to do with jealousy and corruption. It also has to do with nuclear power and just being powerful in general. When the two planets are opposed, this could bring out people's sensitivities in an unusual way, in an erratic way. This could cause people to really have a war with words. They may say things that they really do not mean. They could lash out and they could cause damage in relationships. Many people will feel threatened and intimidated under this aspect. And again, it could cause people to say things that are especially wounding and that they don't really mean. So be careful under this transit. On August 1st, we have Mercury in opposition to Saturn. This aspect has a tendency to create fear and some intimidation, but more inhibition. Saturn is pushing down on the impulse to be open. 
And this may be creating fear for some people that if they're too open, they might be vulnerable and get hurt. So during this opposition, we want to say things and we feel guarded. We feel we cannot trust ourselves to say the right thing. And this is all while Mercury is in Leo, where we want to be outgoing and confident with our words, but the opposition to Saturn just puts too much fear into the equation. On August 2nd, the Sun will be in opposition to Saturn. This is an excellent transit to come on the heels of the Mercury in opposition to Pluto, because this is going to give people a lot more confidence to say what they really need to. This aspect will motivate people to overcome obstacles, but there'll always be a group of people who give up once they're faced with obstacles, and another group of people that will feel inspired to overcome when they are met with obstacles. The sun is shining light on Saturn and Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign that wants to be positive and hopeful, as is Leo. So most likely people will be inspired and want to overcome rather than just hide their light under a bushel. Also on August 2nd, we have the sun not only opposing Saturn, but squaring Uranus. And this could mean that there are a lot of people who want to display their rebelliousness or their eccentricities, but also they want to inspire. So you may have a lot of people who want to teach, to mentor, to help people. And they also may be getting opposition from authorities, from people in power who don't know if it's such a good idea to allow rebels to actually teach people. So it will be an interesting time this first few days of August to see how people negotiate these oppositions. Also on August 2nd, we have Juno turning direct in Sagittarius. Juno is for social justice, for female equality. It's going to look for balancing the roles between men and women. The thirst for freedom that we have seen from so many groups because of inequalities in the United States social arena are going to be addressed. So look for things to come into the headlines having to do with women seeking balance, with minorities seeking balance, with people seeking justice on a governmental, municipality level, a state level, and even a federal level. On August 3rd, we have Venus trining Uranus. This is a very beneficial transit that could give a boost to our economy, or it could just mean that many people have a really good day financially. Also, I want to explain the trine. The trine is when two planets are four signs apart, 120 degrees apart. The three trines or three planets, 120 degrees apart equally, make up a triangle, all adding up to 360 degrees. This is the most harmonious of aspects in a chart and in transits. For August 3rd, we are just talking about Venus trining Uranus. So there could be some surprising news having to do with romance and joy on that day. Or like I said, it could be a good financial report that we receive on that day. Also on August 3rd, we have Mercury squaring Uranus. This aspect actually could make people a little bit nervous. They may feel like they're not quite sure what's going to happen. I mean, there could be some surprises that are quite joyful, but mostly I think it's going to affect people in terms of being unsure. Some people may be actually overwhelmed by surprises. On August 6th, the sun will square Uranus. And for this transit, what we see is that changes keep coming, but they're not always welcome changes. The parties that are represented by Uranus and Taurus could be conservative people. They could be people that actually only want to change according to their agenda. And their agenda may not be completely tied to practices that we want to accept. The sun in Leo is probably going to represent people who are more dramatic, more inspiring, more 
um, tried and true, really. And they're not willing to give up their positions for the people who are represented by Uranus. So there's going to be tension in the news. There's going to be arguments. There's going to be surprises and probably some chaos surrounding August 6th. So around August 3rd, Uranus is really, really highlighted. We have Venus trining Uranus on that date, which I said could be good for us financially. We have Mercury squaring Uranus and the Sun squaring Uranus on that date. And both of these aspects probably will bring about a lot of tension, nervousness, even surprises that people really don't want. I don't think it means anything disruptive like military or warlike action. I don't even think that it means a severe weather event. I think with Mercury and the Sun involved with Uranus, we're talking more about people. So Uranus is really under the spotlight. If you haven't seen my Saturn-Uranus uh, video, please be sure and watch it. It's a really good one. And it will help explain why Uranus is such an important planet for 2021. On August 8th, of course, we have the new moon in Leo, and I just finished recording a beautiful video all about that new moon with predictions for every rising sign. This is the chart for the new moon in Leo. As you can see, the sun and the moon are in opposition to Saturn, so that's going to be a challenge for some people. Um, the sun and the moon and Mercury are also loosely opposed to Pluto. Venus is still in opposition to Neptune, and Mars and Jupiter are in opposition. We'll talk about all of those planetary arrangements in the next video about August. In the meantime, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about these astrology videos, if they're helpful, if they're educational, if they're informative, and if you just enjoy them or not. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you joined me, and I'll see you next time.